topic is the juvenile justice system, and we're talking to uh, Judge Andrew Shokoff and Mr. Earl Jordan, both of the Nashville juvenile justice system here in Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, Judge, before we had our break, we promised that we would talk about the structure when we came back, and let us have you to uh, talk about the uh, structure of the uh, juvenile justice system here in Nashville. Okay. Uh, in terms of handling kids charged with crime, I think it's important for everybody to know that m the vast majority of the cases that we uh, uh, deal with are cases that are involve uh, nonviolent offenses, misdemeanors and nonviolent property offenses. There are about 7% of our caseload that involve crimes against persons, and those are the ones that are the most troubling and the ones that we spend a lot of time on. Uh, but it's important to keep everything in perspective and not to, to recognize that that's a small but important percentage. The other thing that's important to remember is that uh, last year, 95 plus percent of the kids in school, we didn't see them at all. That is, those are the representative of the young people in our community, and we don't want to scapegoat an entire generation who are doing very well and who are really wonderful kids by focusing just on the ones that, are, that, that have problems. In terms of the, the bulk of the kids, the kids that are getting into minor mischief, our response as a juvenile court is to require that they do at a minimum public service work or community service work. So you will see kids uh, helping paint over graffiti, uh, helping with neighborhood cleanups, uh, maintaining some of these little pocket parts that we have, uh, parks we have around the, the community, mulching trails or mulching uh, flower beds in public areas. Uh, helping build a playground. Public Those, service. Mm -hmm. Public service. Mm -hmm. The idea is that if you do something wrong, even whether it's a minor, minor offense, that you incur a debt to the community. Mm -hmm. You did something by your mischief, you need to make things even mm -hmm. by paying back. And the way we do that is after school, on your weekends, in your vacation time, the time that you value, you give that back. Good. Now, if you have a, uh, some kind, if we sense that you've got some kind of drug and alcohol problem, we will require that you go through a drug and alcohol assessment and that you follow whatever the recommendations are. Uh, if you have something where there's been a monetary loss to a victim, you know, we will make you pay restitution to the victim. Uh, we may give, if the victim wants, we may require you that you meet with the victim mm -hmm. so that you can answer some of the questions, kind of face up to, yeah. to mm -hmm. it, because I think that's, uh, sometimes it's easier to face a judge than to face the person you harmed, and it's important uh, to figure out how to make things right between you and the victim. So we do what's called victim offender reconciliation or victim offender conferencing some of the time. For the more serious offenders or for the kids who don't respond to probation, those kids are either going to go onto the adult system or to the, the juvenile uh, system counterpart of the adult system, that is to training schools or residential mm -hmm. programs where you go out of the community, we try to uh, deal with what your problems are so when you come back to the community, you're less likely to get in trouble. But if you pose a risk to community safety, mm -hmm. where you get dealt with is critical. And, mm -hmm. and probation is for those kids that can safely be handled on probation mm -hmm. if they either prove that they're not safe to do that by violating probation or because the nature of their offense is so serious that we can't take the risk in the first place, mm -hmm. we will send those kids on. Mm -hmm. We have about uh, 40 probation staff Good. who work out of 25 neighborhood offices mm -hmm. in every housing develop, in development in about five schools. We have uh, mm -hmm. uh, a uh, probation officer who went to Highland Heights Middle School as a child mm -hmm. who now has his office space okay. there and knows mm -hmm. that community. Mm -hmm. He's a resource. Part of that is because we can better supervise our kids on mm -hmm. probation if we're there in the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Part of it is, that, is to have folks like Earl working with the community, working with kids before they're getting in trouble. We don't, and, and if you're a part of the neighborhood, that's something that you can do. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about our community-based uh, probation mm -hmm. efforts. You know, uh, Mr. Jordan, I think that uh, you've got a program that uh, you're interested in uh, called uh, Killing, Stop the Killing right. a Rally. Right. Why don't you give our audience some information about that rally and how they might be able to assist you in doing what you're trying to do? Yes, before uh, I say that, also, I grew up in J.C. Denver, so it's an honor basically coming back in my neighborhood and doing, you know, these different type of programs with organizations like, you know, the Downtown YMC Urban Services and now uh, Juvenile Courts. Um, the thing of it is, Dr. Hay, there's a lot of different scenarios that's going on there in the community with, you know, the killings, the homicides of uh, very young victims, you know, uh, Adrian Dixon, who passed away two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the last death that, that really hurt me was Keith Stevenson, the one that uh, the young pupil who went to Glencliff High School, mm -hmm. honor student, played football. I knew him uh, um, uh, very well. 
And one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to pinpoint the situation here and what's going on with Nashville and these homicide killings. Um, at our truancy reduction program office in uh, Tony uh, we came up with the idea that we wanted to have a, a rally, basically to educate everyone in the metropolitan area about what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, we wanted to honor the victims of uh, the murders who, the, the families who have been murdered over mm -hmm. the course of four or five years, mm -hmm. like the Adrian Dickinsons, the Jeremiah Warfields, and Keith Stevenson. And we want to bring these families out. We want to have different sponsorships to come out, the churches in the Enterprise Zone area, which is uh, what we call over in our neighborhood, in J.C. Napier, mm -hmm. uh, to come out and support this. Um, food donations of, of whatever, basically hot dogs, mm -hmm. where we can feed the kids, we can feed our uh, uh, constituents and, and so forth. And uh, that's what we want to do. We want to raise the question of mm -hmm. what's going on with Nashville. We want to save Nashville because now, you know, it's, it's getting very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I was telling my coworkers yesterday, you know, the Orleans is not even in town yet. Mm -hmm. and we're having all these homicides, so I want everybody to understand what's going to happen when the Orleans, Orleans mm -hmm. move to Nashville. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have, you're going to bring different sides and different types of people to Nashville because why? The Houston Oilers, you know, they mm -hmm. play the Dallas Cowboys maybe one weekend, you're going to have people that's going to drive to Nashville mm -hmm. to see the Orleans play the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. which is going to bring in more people. And my thing is, you know, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. to stop the situation before it gets even worse. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, Judge, these programs uh, you believe to be very, very important in helping to reduce... Yeah, I think that the, the critical thing is to know that, that it is very, very difficult to take a 16-year-old that uh, has grown up essentially on the streets without supervision, has failed in school and dropped out, mm -hmm. is doing drugs and selling drugs, and and to, to, it is a real challenge to reach a child at that point. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the gavel that I have is not like a magic wand that you wave and all of a sudden you take care of 16 years of mm -hmm. the wrong direction. So we have to deal with those kids at this Good. point. And that's what we have institutions for. And that's unfortunately why we're transferring uh, mm -hmm. some kids to criminal court because things have gone too far. But when you look at the history of those kids, mm -hmm. you look at the missed opportunities, and mm -hmm. it is a tragedy if we don't learn from those kids mm -hmm. what we need to do to prevent the other kids who are starting those paths. So focusing on truancy, focusing on mentoring mm -hmm. programs, and that's, I think, an important message for the community is that it's, it's hard work to, to raise children. But all of us mm -hmm. have to take some responsibility for helping mm -hmm. set examples. That's why the mentoring programs are so powerful. And there, is, there are great opportunities for mm -hmm. churches to get involved, for individuals mm -hmm. to get involved. And to do that in elementary school ages, mm -hmm. uh, that's where we need some, some help. And that's where we're going to make the difference. Very good. And, George, we've got uh, a second commercial break coming up, and after which we will talk about the mentoring program. We'll be back with you following this uh, short commercial break.